morning all i'm i can you can you guys can hear me yeah, yeah. okay um so um no okay we ben sort it out <laughs> well um yes so my name is minu some of you know me some of you might not know me my name is minu matthew chalapuram or chalapuram you can call it however you like it it's fine um i have been a part of god central for just less than 2 years i came to the uk in 2021 october and uh, one week into the country i found god central i mean god led me to god central so and i've just been here so you know that the church has grown on me and i love this place um i am a neonatal nurse by profession i work at the princess alexandra hospital please excuse me if i am that way this is my first time so um yeah So basically uh, Ben approached me a few, few weeks back and he said Minu would you like to uh, share about your favorite scripture and I got excited and I said yes <laughs> Two weeks down the line, I was like, "Oh no, I shouldn't have said yes." But anyway, um, I was panicking, and I was saying, "God, there's so many scriptures. I don't know what to say." However, the Lord said, "Just relax, you know. Just, just sh- share your story and what I've done." And I said, "Okay, fine. That's what I'm going to do." And um, He said, "Just share the scriptures you live by, and you know what's built you up in your Christian life." And I said, "Cool." That's it. That's easy, yeah. I just have to like rerun what has happened in the past. So I'm just going to do that. Um my story is basically a story of brokenness. If this will move, maybe not. What? There you go. So this uh that picture, it just my story is basically a story of absolute brokenness um and restoration. Um and he's still restoring. So and in this brokenness and in this process of restoration, I have always rested in his promises, not because I knew everything front to back, I didn't. He taught me to rest in his promises. and my confidence has been his faithfulness because in all things he's just come across as faithful so uh, i'm just going to take you through my life and this is my family that is me really chubby then really chubby now that's my wonderful father i mean it is genetics you know um and that's my beautiful family that's mom and dad my sister she's 6 years older to me um and that is my sister i don't know if this works this is work no okay never mind so that's my sister her husband they both are into uh, she's a physiotherapist he's a businessman and he does a lot of vision work as well in the interiors of india that those two munchkins there they are my nephews we have a third one um his name is mikhail he's not on the picture uh but yeah and uh That is a picture of my graduation. So I was privileged to be born in a very good family. Thankfully God had given everything perfect. And I graduated from one of the best colleges in India, universities in India. I did my nursing from there. Very young I was representing my college at interna- at national level so I was really like smashing it at a very young age. Yeah. <laughs> Oh I'll tell you how God smashed me later but never mind. Uh, but then we came to uh then I moved at very young when I was 23 I moved to Kuwait I got a job with uh, the Ministry of Health in Kuwait and at a very young age I was working at one of the best hospitals in Kuwait and uh, that there is a huge bunch of one side of my family so if you've paid attention to my surname Chalapuram is uh, usually family names that we inherited uh, inherit from one generation to another and my dad side is chalapuram my mom side is katmangat if you go to the down south and you say i'm a katmangat people will be like bowing they'll be like oh you're a katmangat oh you're a chalapuram so it's a very 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 big name and um i don't see i don't know if you can see that picture very clearly but that is i belonged i used to belong to uh, the syrian jacobite church where you have bishops and tri- preachers uh, priests and just ancestors i think we've had like five or six generations of absolute and um, ancient heritage of the syrian jacobite church faith that followed my uncles uh, are still priests one of my uncles is actually there in one of those pictures so i was very um, i had a very different life than what i have now and everything was sorted out i knew what i wanted to do at a very young age um i was very headstrong and i got married to uh, someone who was ma- I, whom i knew for 7 years and um after kuwait i moved to the us and 
However, in all of this, Jesus was never a part of my story. I mean, I was Christian, but I really wasn't someone who followed Jesus. And um, he was never a part of my story. I was very headstrong. I knew what I wanted, and I was a go-getter then. And um, after I moved to the US, things just started to feel different. Like, I just felt things were not right, and my marriage started to fail, and it was just not working out. I came to a very uh, depressing point of emotional roller coaster, and you know, um, I came to a point where um, I wasn't happy, and internally, I just felt worthless. I didn't know where I belonged. Like, I had all of this, and this is great. This is amazing, but I just didn't know where I belonged. I put my trust in all of these things. And I started to feel so empty because everything was failing. Everything just didn't satisfy. I failed. I felt because my marriage was failing, I felt like I failed as a, as a sister, as a child, as a daughter, as a mom. It, just, it was just an absolute sense of unworthiness that kept coming in. There were times when I would just sit at the window, stare into the sky, and days would just pass by. And I would get up sit there, eat food, go back to bed, and it just got to me. It got the worst of me. I felt very suffocated, and I didn't think it was, like, life was even that great to live about, you know? And in one of my darkest moments of life, my cousin, she was in India, and she messaged me. She sent a, she sent a voice note at a very odd hour back in India, and she said, Minu, I was just praying for you, and I feel God's asking how you're doing. And I was like, hmm. No one really cares. I can't talk to my family. Why would God care? But that stayed with me, and I didn't have anything else to do. I didn't know how to come out of that feeling of darkness and absolute, you know, just emptiness. So I started reading the Bible, and I started to listen to worship music. And the more I did that, the more things got worse, I feel, uh, you know, because it's so hard when you have to follow the voice of the Lord and you have to really wait on God to come through. And it just became even more difficult. My husband, he was becoming an atheist, whereas I was coming to know Jesus and I started reading the Bible. And, you know, um, it was just absolutely, we both were going into different directions. I moved to India because it was a lot and I had to take a break. And I thought maybe coming back home would make things better and then I could go back. Um, so my dad, I came to my mom and dad's house and um, dad took me in and we were there. I was there for a while and dad accommodated me. Um, however, he was, there was a lot of embarrassment and shame that came upon my family because a married daughter has come back. You know, as in the Indian culture, it's like, why is she not with her husband? Something's wrong with her. So there was a lot of shame um, and, you know, it was just really difficult. I met a few uh, spiritual mentors who are my mentors now. And um, she started speaking to me about the Bible. And this verse actually spoke to me. That is John 15, 4 and 5. It says, abide in me and I will abide in you. For without, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you un unless ab you abide in me. I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. All of that didn't make any sense to me then. The only thing that made sense to me was abide in me, so I have to abide in Jesus, and Jesus will abide in me, for without Jesus, I can do nothing. That was the only thing I understood out of the whole thing, to be very honest with you. And in that sense of abandonment from my husband, in that sense of, in that sense of rejection and abuse and all of that, I just knew that I had to remain in him. There was nothing else that I could actually do. There were times when I would go without food, and the word that says man doesn't live by God, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the Father, just became life to me. Um, worship became a place of solace, and you know I just used to sit and worship. I used to lock myself in the room and just worship. And in that worship, in being in that place of intimacy with Jesus, I could, I could sense that there was no shame between me and Jesus. There was no abandonment between me and Jesus. There was no rejection. So I would come out of my room, and my dad would be yelling at me and saying, you're such a curse to my family, Manu. And I'd go back inside, and I'd be in worship, and God's like, I love you. And I was like, I'll stay here rather than going outside, you know? So that's just how it was. And uh, yes, I just felt like God took me in, in my place of abandonment and rejection. And um, in this place, he did break my pride. He broke my pride because there was my inheritance, my generation, my education, I was smashing it. 
Carl said, you know what, Mino? I'm bigger than all of this. And I stopped, I stopped becoming God in my own life. And I just, I just submitted to him. Um, slowly and steadily, steadily, I knew I had to start again. So I had to really like look for jobs. I started from a very small job back in Mumbai. And uh, God was building me up. Relationship with my dad was improving. I love, we have a beautiful relationship now. Um, it's, it's just beautiful now. And um, yeah, and he was building me up slowly and steadily. And then I was in worship and I was still praying for my marriage to come through. Um, and I was like, God, take me back to the US and make everything right. However, he then showed me that in worship. And I was like, Whoa, what's that? And then he showed me another vision where I was getting onto a train and I was going somewhere. So I said, okay, so that's Chicago. He's taking me back to Chicago because there's a metro in Chicago and we're going, I'm going back to the US. I came back home, I looked up for Underground USA and it, this picture just didn't come up anywhere. And I was like, oh, maybe it was not of God. However, in my spirit, I just took USA out and I just put the underground and I put it on Google and this picture populated on the screen. And I was like, ooh, this is a real thing. Um, <laughs> so I clicked on the first image and it said London Underground. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not going anywhere now. You know, Lord, you're just restoring everything back. I'm not going to go anywhere. Mom and dad are happy, I have a job, I just got a little new car, a very small one, I'm happy, I don't want to move, just take me back to the US. But you know what, he would just not, he, in my heart I was feeling stuck because this picture was out of nowhere. And I kept praying and I spoke to my spiritual mentors and I just came to a point where I felt so empty and I spoke to one of my mentors and she said, you're not following what God has asked you to do, you want to do things in your own strength. So if God has shown you a picture and people have confirmed it for you, take it on and get on with it. And I was like, but, but what about my family? What about these relationships that have just been restored? What about my job and all of that? And she said, shh, shh, just let God be God. And I was like, okay, I've learned it once. I'm gonna do it again. I'm just gonna do that. And I did that, and this picture actually is a picture of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is a picture from my mom's house in my room. I came to my room and I was like, God, I don't want to go to the UK. And I saw this picture and God said, the same scripture that Jesus said, if it is possible, let this cup go away from me. Nevertheless, let your will be done. And I cried, I cried because I had to die to my will. And I had to say, God, if it is possible, please don't send me to UK. Please let me be with my family and take me back to US. Nevertheless, Lord, let your will be done. And in that nevertheless, I broke. I just, I, I gave up my rights. And in that time, you know, um, I just remember myself crying. And But eventually, I gave up my will to God because I know he knows better. He sustained me through the worst. So he just knows better. So I just said, Lord, take my life. It is yours. And he just opened my door. He opened doors and... Yeah, so these two scriptures basically have become a very central part of my life and I've built my Christian life on the basis of these two scriptures. Um, and I just have, yeah, so this, this is just a little illustration of how these scriptures became a part of my life. Because when you have, uh, when someone's asked you to surrender your will to me, you need to trust this person. I mean, I can't just surrender the will to randomly anybody. I need to get to know this person. So I had to learn to trust in Jesus first. And then I had to, in that place of intimacy, of remaining in him, I had to know his character. In that, to build that character, I had to spend time with God. And in that, God said, I will show you the great and unsearchable things. Jeremiah 3.33. But then again, he will show you the great and the unsearchable things. What do you do with that? You have to trust him again, actually. You have to surrender your will again. And then you have to trust him again. So this was what was my life, and this is still my life. And uh, yeah, this is a picture. I don't know if you guys know the story in the Old Testament where Moses was, um, he was, he was, he was in a battle where uh, the Israelites were fighting against the Amalekites and uh, God said, you have to hold your staff up high. And uh, every time he held his staff up high, the people were winning, Israelites were winning. Every time he lowered it, they were losing. 
So he just had to keep his staff high, but it was tiring. And this reminds me of my journey of how people have actually stood with me. Uh, because if it was not for my spiritual mentors and people, I don't think I would have been able to survive. I just wouldn't have been able to because there have been times when a hundred times that I've wanted to give, it, give up and be, no, I can't do this lot. But I have had a number of Aaron's in my life. I've had a number of hers in my life. And you, Aaron. Yes. Um, so yeah, this is a picture of my godly mentors and the beautiful fellowship. That down there, they are my spiritual mentors there in South Africa, Mama Lynn and Papa Rajan. They have held me in my worst, the times when I was starving. They were the ones who really just came through to help me out. That there is Pastor Gavin and Auntie Dolly. They are my pastors from Mumbai, the church that I was in when I was starting from zero. They were the ones who were you know, investing time and wisdom and just everything. Then, you know, Ben and Nikki, uh, they have been my spiritual mentors over here in the UK. I still remember when I was going through my divorce, it was just really difficult. And uh, there was a lot of defamation and stuff, and I didn't know what to do. I would just sit and cry. And every time Nikki and Ben would just come, pull the car, put me in the back seat, I would keep sitting in the car and I would just keep crying. And then out of nowhere, Ben would put up a Bollywood song and I would get happy. So, uh, yeah, so, it, you know, God just sent people. And obviously, there's fellowship, you know. I mean, th there have been life groups and Bible studies. People who have been part of this group, they know I've been sitting in the corner. I've been crying. People have given me words. People have prayed with me. People have helped me to hold my staff high to win that battle of whatever I was going through. That over there is a little group that I'm a part of uh, where we have intercessory prayer every Tuesday. They prayed for me as well. There are more people on this, uh, in this journey who have held my high, hands high, but um, like for Claire, Claire used to pray every time I was in India and when I was going through the whole uh, paperwork for divorce, you know, Claire really helped me and she would check on me. I don't know, you guys know Joyce? Joyce was there as well. She's in Romford now. And uh, Ian, Ian Remfrey, he once gave me a word when we were at Mark and Bethan's uh, life group, which pushed me through uh, a very difficult season. So yeah, I, I really believe in fellowship. And I have to show you this picture. This is amazing. Yay! This is God's <laughs> promise literally fulfilled in my life. So when I came out at the London Heathrow Airport, I ran to that picture because that was the first live picture I saw. And I went and I told my friends, take a picture of me with this thing. And they were like, what is it? And I said, just, and she's like, is this like a famous thing? I said, I don't know, just take a picture. Just, just take a picture. This means a lot to me. So that was a picture that I took. And um, yeah, this was a scripture that the Lord gave me in my journey. Go from your country, go from your people and your father's household to the land that I will show you. And rest is his work and he's still doing that. I don't know what's in the next season, but uh, in this journey of preparation, I really believe that the Lord was saying, he wants us to remain in him. And he wants us to surrender our life back to him, give up our, uh, our will, and he will take us where he needs us. And um, I just believe that, you know, in this season, in this new season, corporately as a church, individually, and just in our families, God wants to move. But he can't move if we don't submit and surrender and be with him. So, yeah, I just, that's, that's my story. That's my life. And let's remain in him. Amen.